Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the latest Tesla features and news, and I'll explain how the potential upcoming tax credit could be wiped out for certain Tesla owners. Now, this year, Tesla hasn't released many software updates to their cars. In fact, the last big one was the 2020 holiday software update about a year ago. But to make up for it, they have released quite a few significant updates to the Tesla mobile app lately. Now, the app is getting so much love this year because Tesla wants it to be the primary hub for not just car owners, but for solar owners and even for non-Tesla EV owners when they start using Tesla superchargers. And not too long ago, we got a new feature called Live Remote Sentry Mode View, which gave us the ability to view the car's cameras directly from the app, which is really nice. But last week, we got yet another update that added customization features, better widgets, and more. Now, this latest update added cabin overheat protection adjustments along with some widget improvements, but the best feature is the ability to customize quick controls on the vehicle homepage with a long press. So now you can add your top four most used controls to the quick controls menu on the app's homepage. Now I think Tesla owners with automatic trunks will love having the trunk open button on that home screen now. Now also, I jokingly posted on Twitter about how it takes a special kind of person to be a Tesla owner with an Android phone because I always see Android users complaining Tesla releasing mobile app updates to iOS first. So what do you think? If you own a Tesla and an Android, does that bother you at all? Let me know in the comments below. Now, speaking of mobile app updates, last week there was a worldwide Tesla app server outage resulting in owners not being able to connect to their cars through the mobile app. Now, Tesla outages are relatively rare, but this certainly isn't the first time. About a year ago, Tesla experienced a complete outage of both its customer facing servers and internal system for several hours. Now, this most recent outage was acknowledged by Elon on Twitter, and it was about five hours later when he said, should be coming back online now. Looks like we may have accidentally increased verbosity of network traffic. Apologies, we will take measures to ensure this doesn't happen again. Now, sometimes I take for granted how much I rely on my phone to unlock my car and manage my car from wherever I am, so it goes to show you that although these types of tech features are fantastic when they work, they are definitely inconvenient when they don't work, so it's always important to keep the key card with you as a backup to unlock and lock your Tesla in case the app has issues. Every year, Consumer Reports asks their members whether they'd buy their same car again if given the chance based on different aspects of their car ownership experience. Now, earlier this month, the results of the survey showed that Tesla has three out of the top four spots of the most satisfying cars, Model 3, Model S, and Model Y, respectively. But just a few days later, Consumer Reports released its annual auto reliability brand rankings list, and Tesla was way down near the very bottom of the list, finishing 27th out of 28 total brands, with only Lincoln below it. Now, this year's reliability survey showed that only the Model 3 was rated with average reliability, the highest mark out of all Tesla vehicles. Now, Tesla's other three vehicles were considered below average. This might come as a surprise because electric vehicles are usually known for needing less maintenance due to fewer moving parts compared to gas cars. So how did Tesla rank so badly on this list? Well, on its website, Consumer Reports states how it obtains its rankings for reliability. It says, for reliability, we ask members to know any problems with their vehicles that occurred in the previous 12 months. They are asked to identify problems that they considered serious. We ask them to include problems covered by warranty, but not the ones resulting from accident damage or due solely to recall. Respondents check off problems from a list of trouble areas, ranging from engine and transmission to climate system, brakes, electrical system, and power accessories. Now, as a Model 3 owner myself, I actually did an entire video explaining the total cost of my maintenance and service after three years, so watch that if you haven't yet, but none of my repairs have prevented me from actually driving the car safely to get to a destination, and they have all been performed at my location, so it didn't negatively affect my schedule at all. Now, I'd personally rank my Model 3 reliability very high, but I do know that if there's one thing Tesla could stand to invest more time and money into, it would be their service. With the onslaught of Tesla vehicles hitting the road recently and in the near future, providing timely and reliable service will be even more important for Tesla's success and customer satisfaction. Now, the funny thing is that the last two brands on the Consumer Reports reliability list were the only two brands who had multiple cars on the most satisfying cars list, so that just goes to show you that satisfaction doesn't necessarily rely on reliability too much. Now, I'm a big fan of diversifying my investments, especially now when inflation is a whopping 6.2%, which is probably obvious the way Tesla has increased their prices this year. And with some stocks trading at the highest level since the dot-com bubble, many financial experts are recommending alternative investments such as fine art, 
which is historically appreciated at 14% a year and according to this Citibank report, has the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class. And until now, the barrier to entry for investing in paintings was too difficult for the everyday person like you and me, as you need tens of millions of dollars to build a diversified art portfolio, but Masterworks has changed that. Masterworks.io lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings from world famous artists from Picasso to Warhol without breaking the bank. You simply sign up at masterworks.io and find a painting that you like or think will appreciate in value, then select the number of shares you want to own, and then buy them. And once you're invested in that painting, you can hold long term until it's sold, or if you want access to your money earlier, you can sell shares through the secondary market to someone else. It's a really innovative way to invest in something valuable other than just stocks. It's similar to owning shares in a public company, and their team has 75 years of art buying experience. Now, over 250,000 people have already signed up, and there is a long wait list, but if you click the link in the description below, you can skip the wait list and start your investing journey with Masterworks today. Now, circling back to Tesla service, you might have heard about the recent story of a Tesla customer receiving their car with missing features like the USB-C ports and wireless chargers due to supply chain shortages. Well, luckily, Tesla appears to have started retrofitting USB-C ports and wireless chargers for some of these Model 3s and Model Ys. And one Model 3 owner said his missing USB-C port and wireless chargers have been fixed by Tesla's mobile service, but he had to personally schedule an appointment with Tesla's mobile service to get his car fixed, which some may argue that Tesla should have initiated the retrofit themselves without relying on the customer to notice it and handle it first. Now, in Tesla's defense, the supply chain issues are a global problem that's affecting many companies, but hopefully Tesla tries to handle these types of things a little better going forward. Now, other than service, I think Tesla's next biggest focus should be continuing to build out their supercharger network, and they're doing just that with their first ever supercharger station opening in Alaska. Now, this is a huge milestone because many gas car owners have a big fear of range when it comes to EVs, and they are afraid of not having places to charge. Fortunately, Tesla realized this was going to be a big hurdle years ago, so they decided to get a head start on building out its supercharger network, which is now the most extensive global fast charging network with 30,000 superchargers worldwide. And the new Alaska supercharger is just a four stall station, but at least it's a start in that area. And with Tesla's plan to open up superchargers to non-Tesla EVs, they have stated that their goal is to triple the size of the supercharger network within two years, which would be not only amazing, but probably necessary with all the EVs coming in the next couple of years. Now, in a recent video, I explained my plan to try to get the best Model Y deal ever with the new 4680 battery, and we may have seen some progress on this. Some interesting aerial photos were taken at Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin that showed several Tesla Model Y vehicles rolling out and heading over to the site's test track. Now, this could mean that Tesla has successfully built the new Model Y in Berlin, but there is also a chance that these vehicles were just used to calibrate the production equipment in the facility. However, the fact that the three Model Ys were painted in different colors could point to a possibility that Tesla is also testing its next generation paint shop. Elon himself said the facility would be Tesla's best paint so far, which is an area that customers have been critical of Tesla in the past. And Giga Berlin was initially expected to start production sometime in the second half of 2021, but is still waiting for its final permit. And that brings us to the latest updates on the tax credit as it pertains to Tesla. The Build Back Better Act passed the House of Representatives on November 19th, which contains EV tax credits. However, the act must now pass the Senate, where it could face some roadblocks due to opposition from certain senators. Now, the Senate will make their own changes after the Thanksgiving break, but Democratic leaders hope to get the bill through the Senate back to the House and sent to the president to sign by the end of the year. So right now, nothing is guaranteed, things could change, and there's still a long process to go. But if you're planning on buying a new Tesla, here's what's currently in the bill. You must take delivery on January 1st, 2022 or later. It's still a refundable tax credit for 2022, but would change to a point of sale credit starting in 2023. Now, the total tax credit for a new Tesla is $8,000, while the total tax credit for a U.S. Union assembly, such as Ford and Chevy, would be $12,500. There's a purchase limit of one vehicle per taxpayer per taxable year, and there are income caps as well, $500,000 for married jointly, $375,000 for head of household, and $250,000 for single. There are also price caps on the eligible vehicles. $80,000 for SUVs and trucks, and $55,000 for sedans. And that means the Tesla vehicles that are not eligible are all Model S and Model X variants and the Performance Model 3, unfortunately. So that means all Model Y variants are eligible. 
Now, if you're like me and you have a Model Y on order, then you may have noticed that Tesla has basically canceled out this potential tax credit with all the price increases this year. The Model 3 has increased by thousands of dollars throughout the year, and believe it or not, the price of the long range Tesla Model Y has increased by $10,000 in just nine months. It was $50,000 in February after accounting for the required destination fee, and now that same exact model is more than $60,000. If you were one of the lucky ones to get a $50,000 Model Y earlier this year, congrats, you played it very well. But the people who probably ordered a few months ago may end up getting the best deal since they locked in the price before the latest increases, and they will probably take delivery in 2022 and take advantage of the new tax credit if it gets passed. So some people may be able to get a dual motor Model Y for around $45,000. But like I said, nothing is set in stone things could change, so please subscribe to stay up to date on the latest updates to the EV tax credit as they come out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.